last two years for India were amazing. Uh, it changed how we as citizens uh, and small businesses and organizations communicated, collaborated, how we banked, how we enjoyed, how we socially connected with our friends, family, and uh, our network. Uh, this was, of course, uh, amplified by COVID, but uh, looking a step behind, you would see uh, the foundations were laid by the Digital India platform that was created by Government of India and further amplified by the payments revolution. Uh, this, of course, is awesome. Uh, we're creating huge amount of data. We are able to enjoy our lives better without having to leave our, the comfort of our homes. And uh, uh, like the world, we are part of the huge 33 zettabyte data that's being created every year. But this is not stopping here and is expected to grow fivefold in the next five years. Uh, one thing that needs to be taken care of by all of us is that we have been left behind in terms of data security awareness and the precautions that we're taking to protect ourselves from uh, our precious data. It could be lost, it could be compromised, or it could go into the wrong hands and cause us personal misery, financial damages, and more deeper losses. Uh, at Stella, last year itself, we were inundated with thousands of requests from corporations, consumers, and small businesses uh, where they requested to help them bail out from sudden data loss incidents. Uh, there were, of course, those traditional challenges of hard drive crashes, natural disasters. Uh, we still had floods. We had cases of fire. But what was the biggest change were ransomware and malware cases. There was a huge growth there, and people almost assumed that they would not have to deal with separation with their data. And uh, this caused a lot of distress. Uh, it's unfortunate that in some cases where uh, state actors are involved, uh, the chances of recovering back data are limited. However, in many other cases, people have been lucky. So the biggest challenge that happens after such a data loss incident is um, your life comes to a standstill. Uh, your memories uh, are away from you. You can't bank. Uh, if you're an organization, you can suffer huge financial losses, uh, loss of reputation. And a good idea then is to have a, a strong line of protection to have multiple levels of defense so that the compromise does not happen. You have strong internet security in place, take strong backups. And uh, create a strong sense of awareness uh, in your organization if you're running a company, or even with the masses, I think uh, while there's some initiatives already taken by Government of India in this aspect, uh, but a, lo a lot needs to be done. We have uh, suddenly a new audience, uh, people who haven't used their technical digital device all their life, and they're in the 50s and 60s and 70s, and now they play with these gadgets not realizing that they could be a victim of a financial fraud um, or compromise of their personal data, which they would not want to see. Uh, that's something that needs a lot of attention amongst all of us in India. Uh, but here is the good news. Um, as I speak today, uh, there's already a clearance to the data protection bill, which was long awaited and tabled many years back and uh, it's likely to see the green light and be passed as a law uh, later in this winter 21 or early 22. Once that happens, that would give a new line of protection uh, to individuals in particular uh, to demand uh, their data privacy rights and uh, uh, make organizations care more for their customer data or any kind of personal information that they deal with. Uh, this has this law, uh, this bill, if it becomes a law, has strong penalties uh, for the companies who are responsible for the data breaches. It's a welcome step. Uh, this uh, law is as strong as any other law uh, in other parts of the world, like GDPR in Europe, 
or the Japanese uh, uh, privacy law or the Canadian law. So I think we should be very proud that uh, we have a very strong uh, law that can help us deal with privacy breaches when our data is not handled well by the custodians. Uh, while that may give us some comfort, one thing that I would also want uh, the audience to be aware of is uh, how they deal with the gadgets when they are uh, buying in a new and trading in their old device. Uh, intentionally or unintentionally, their data could be compromised. There have been global instances of data breaches, uh, not only for individuals, but uh, Morgan Stanley was fined $60 million early this year for failing to safely uh, dispose information in devices that were discarded. Uh, so good data destruction practice is very important, uh, whether you're an individual or a small business. Uh, when you're letting go the IT assets, uh, it could be a phone, it could be a camera, it could be a computer, or it could be a server. Secure data destruction assures that no traces of data are left uh, once a data destruction software is used to overwrite all addressable areas where information was recorded on a storage device. Uh, this is a sound practice and also approved by U.S. government to use uh, uh, proven data destruction standards like NIST to wipe data beyond recovery. Um, so I would say um, in a nutshell, be very aware about data security risks that are prevalent all around. Uh, ensure strong data backup practices and also when your device life cycle is ending, still be very careful how you dispose it of because it's your data. You could be at risk.